Oh, there we go. Well, all right then. I guess we're recording. Um, hello, fellows. Fellow airsoft peoples. Um, this is the first video that I'll probably post on my channel. Um, first video ever, actually. And it's kind of fortunate that I'm working on this particular gun because the rest of them are in places where you guys can't really see the full process. Um, but after this video, come more videos. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be all tech related. There's going to be some gameplay at some point. So look forward to that. But, anywho, let's get down to business, why don't we? So, this particular gun is a DITAC SLR Sharp Bros AK-74U. They call it a crank. Um, it's a modern gun. Um, it's been sitting for a long while in pieces over the winter, waiting for me to rebuild it, which is why I'm here. Um, and this particular gun had been previously built out by me, the owner, uh, and run quite heavily last season. So the 2022 season. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go look at the parts that are in this gun from last season. What I did to it and what I'm going to be doing to it. And I'll explain the processes of why I do certain things and how I do them. Bunch of shims. Put those in with my... Dirty shims. I have used shims and I have new shims. So a mixture of both depending on what I need them for. Uh, but right now I think I'm going to start with looking at the compression set. Checking the health of that. Um, then I'll go into shimming gears. And after that the pretty much the gun's ready for reassembly. So, as long as everything checks up there, everything's working. Um, I will be installing a V3 Gate Titan into this thing, as I'm doing with all of my guns. Um, I really like the, the Titan platform. I like what you can do with it. Um, the ease of use, ease of installation. It's my preferred method of doing things, personally. Um, this particular gun, I'm trying out some new parts uh, one of them being a new rocket motor it's a high torque and apparently these have built-in fans to help cool the motor not that I've ever really had a, a heating issue with my motors But it was a new, unique thing that I thought was cool, so I felt like trying it. But let's get into the parts. So I'm going to first check compression. Oh goodness, I'm beating things up. So this is a used G&G &G cylinder. Um, it's got a little bit of wear to it, but uh, the inside of the cylinder actually ain't too bad. 
and giving that this gun is a 74U with an extremely short barrel. Uh, I run a three-quarter port, probably should run a, a half port, which would just mean that the port would be further up on the cylinder. Uh, but I like to have my guns run a little extra volume, just because I like to shoot heavier BBs, and it does help. Um, I've done some research into it. I've never really ran into a problem running over-volumed. Some people say it'll cause inaccuracies, but I haven't really had too much of an issue with it. Gun's a crank anyhow, it's not going to be terribly accurate at range because of the barrel length. This cylinder actually does have a little bit, a little bit of scratching in the front there. I mean, it's a very light cylinder. It's not a really hardcore metal cylinder or anything. I might replace it with another ported cylinder if I have one that's in decent shape and will actually fit this particular gearbox. Found one right here that actually doesn't look too, too bad out of my used parts bin here. This looks to be probably some form of Lancer Tats tactical <laughs> cylinder. Um, very similar to the G&G &G one. Similar construction. Similar weight. Just this one's not scarred up like this one is. Um... And I believe this is actually the stock cylinder head for this gun. Um, either that or a similar V3 stock cylinder head. Um, I've had problems replacing cylinder heads in the past. Either they don't fit or they um, don't fit in the gearbox very well. So I tend to try to use stock cylinder heads if they're good. Uh, I'm just going to make sure this port lines up, move the top box shell out of the way, and just start messing with the bottom. Uh, I'm actually going to turn you so I can actually openly see where you're sitting. Move that just so it's slightly offset there. And this is a believe a aluminum o-ring trying to see where the fucking ring is there she is o-ring nozzle which is kind of a, a necessity to me with any build i think o-ring nozzles are a vast improvement over non-o-ring nozzles oh and i put the cylinder head on wrong put it on backwards I'm just going to make sure this actually fits in the shell. Seems like something's unhappy. Usually you'd have no problem with this thing being able to seal fully. I'll test the same thing with the other cylinder real quick, but it could be that the cylinder head... Oh, that's fully seated, so I'll see if it does the same thing with the other cylinder. Maybe it was just something to do with the gearbox that I didn't catch the last time I did it. But really good snap there. That's a positive, positive snap for that. Yeah, it's absolutely no problem there whatsoever. Fits right in like a glove. So if I could find out why that's doing what it is with the other one, I might be able to salvage it for use. Is it longer, maybe? Doesn't look like it. Maybe it's wider by a little bit. Um, that's one thing you'll learn after doing this for a while. That for some reason, some things just won't fit. For whatever reason it may be at that particular moment in time. With that particular part, with that particular gun, with that particular gearbox. Okay. 
Um, what I can do is just push it forward ever so slightly. Let's see if that. Oh my goodness, I'm fucking throwing things. Okay, see now that is more acceptable. That is where the within an acceptable margin for myself. Um, I could just easily just force the gearbox closed. That's pretty normal, at least in my experience. Uh, before, where there is you know a two, three, four millimeter gap, that is not normal. That means something is wrong somewhere. Um, but I can go ahead and retire this now that I know that this cylinder will work. Now let's check compression. So the way I check compression is very simple. I make sure that my nozzle and cylinder head are in some sort of favorable position. Put the piston in, put my finger at the end of the nozzle, and that got nothing whatsoever. So I don't know, it's probably the cylinder head if I had to guess. That's getting no compression. Now, as I've built this gun before and I've run this exact cylinder head nozzle setup, I know it's probably not the cylinder head. However, it could be the fit of the cylinder head with the cylinder. Probably shouldn't be the piston head, which is a little dinged up, but it ain't too bad. Since this is a personal build, I don't care too much, as long as it works. Usually it will work. Now, let's see if this is a problem with just a cylinder. I'm going to do the same thing. Swap it back to my other cylinder that I was previously using. Which is indeed a much tighter fit around the cylinder head. Give it another test. Which is much better. There's still a little bit of leeway there where I can force air through. So it's not necessarily ideal. Now I do have upgraded cylinder heads which might be worth looking into. I've got not an upgraded one, but it's one with a double O-ring from another stock gun at some point in time. Now what I could do is swap out the entire compression system. This is a set out of an E and L. Um, but I want to try to see if I could use this other cylinder head. Now the nowadays V3, V2, AKM4 systems typically use very similar cylinder heads for the most part. But you will occasionally get differences in the length of the, I don't know what you want to call that. I don't know the word for it, the technical word for it. And I try to match them up as best as, be best if I had calipers, digital calipers preferably. But I don't, and I can clearly see that there is a difference in length here. But, yeah, the cylinder just gets nothing. There's nothing good about this. Now, this might take an upgraded cylinder head very good, which I think I have. I have to check. As of late, I don't think I've been buying them because I haven't needed them. Bunch of spare parts out of V3 guns. Other AKs I've taken apart and swapped parts out and what have you. Um, I'm going to check this, see if I have a decent cylinder head 
I got a max one right there without the rubber on the front because that I've found has created issues with gearbox fitment in the case of that particular one it probably did hence the removal I'm gonna have a spare gear set in here spare set of 12 to 1 gears that's news to me I didn't even know that I think this probably came out of you know, two different piston assemblies so this came out of Maybe one or two different guns. Not totally sure there. I don't remember. I have a terrible memory. Let's see if we can get this max head out of here. See if it'll fit in that new new cylinder very well. Um, a trick, if your cylinder is kind of stuck in there and you can't get it out, you can take a nice little piston and just push it through. Like that. Does the job. Now, I really wish I could use this cylinder head, or this cylinder for this particular gun, uh, but it's not ported. It's really nice, hefty, well-built cylinder. Use that for another gun somewhere down the line, I'm sure. Now, this cylinder head is absolutely disgusting. It's probably, if I had to guess was one that I did a long time ago, you know, probably a year or two ago, back when I used to glue Sorbo to the back end of my cylinder heads, which is a form of AOE correction that I don't do anymore, because that's why. Uh, Sorbo, super glue, came undone, causes a lot of havoc, a lot of problems. Unnecessary, unnecessarily so. Um... I now use the tactic where I just put spacers behind my piston heads. Um, I like that a lot better. Um, just got to be really careful that either you get a longer screw or you use a really strong Loctite or something so you don't pop your, cylinder, uh, your piston head off during action. I've only ever seen it happen to one of my builds, so it's not a great concern of mine. Now I'm going to use the same nozzle. It's usually my go-to is if a nozzle works for a gun, I'm going to continue using it until I can't use it no more, and then I'll put a new one in. But this one has an O-ring. It's metal. Works pretty well. Of course, this, I guess I guess you could call it the, the shaft of the cylinder head. As much as I don't want to use that word. Um, it's pretty dinged up. She's pretty scratched up. She's seen some... A lot of use, I guess. Um, but as this particular gun is not... I mean, I like it, but I have its bigger brother. Same gun, just longer. And I much prefer that gun. So this gun is just kind of getting built to be built at this point. It's going to be a loner. Um, I might use it occasionally, but it's not going to be my primary. So I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. Even with some used parts and a little bit of TLC um, I found that guns can surprise you with how reliable and durable these parts can actually be okay oh there we go that is some excellent compression right there um, and if you another trick that you can do when you're checking compression is um if you find that you know you're doing this and you're like still not really getting anything and you know you have some decent quality parts in there and you know you should be getting something um, another trick you can do is take your nozzle off and try it with just the cylinder head and see how your compression fares if it's better then you know that your nozzle needs to be replaced it's at fault um, or if it doesn't fix anything then you know you have a much bigger problem um, it's one of the I'd say the most important part of, of tech work is slowly narrowing down the, the possible suspects for a problem if you have a failure. That's why diagnosing things can take a little bit of time. Now, with the piston in here, um, really nice positive snap right there. You know, everything's nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and close the shell 
I'm not going to screw it in, but I'm going to close the shell and make sure that it's, you know, happy and make sure that there's no points where it's struggling to close or I have to force it to close. But it seems everything worked out well. Everything seems to be really happy here. Um, another good sign is that the piston is free moving. You can even hear it hit an air wall there, a little bit of an air break from it just naturally catching compression on its own, which is pretty sweet. That means all your parts are working pretty well together, and so much so that this just stuck to the top. It's a really nice snug fit. Um, now, if, if you were using like a, a V2 M4, an M4 gearbox, and you didn't particularly have a, a good quality gearbox shell, um, using all aluminum parts might not be the best idea. It causes a lot more um, pressure to the front end of the gearbox, especially when you have an aluminum metal cylinder head and a metal piston head. Um, although it happens that V3s are a little bit more robust than um, V2s, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, although this Ditec shell and this Ditec gun I love to pieces, I'm not wholly confident in the construction of their gearboxes. It feels very similar to like a SEMA gearbox or something. They're not, you know, top of the line. Um, they've done a lot of things with this gun that are very tech friendly, which is why I still have it and I still love it to pieces. Um, but the gearbox quality is not one that I would wholly trust to do like a really high pressure kind of build. You know, I've yet to have an actual gearbox break on me in my experience. Um, but then again, I'm not one to try to push things to the limits to try to find out. I build things for you know, reliability and, and, and power, per se. I like my stuff to be near the field limit of whatever field I'm playing at. I like my, my bullets, my BBs, to go far and go fast. That's my main worry. I'm not building these guns to get, you know, 60 RPS and get some really stupid trigger response, like binary systems and whatnot. It's not why I build guns. I don't enjoy building guns for that sake. I think it's all a little bit over the top. Um, but other than that, hot take right there, a little opinion. Um... This O-ring still looks healthy, still functioning healthily. Um, I do have replacement O-rings that I would like to try, but I'm not going to if I don't need to. Um, but I do use, this is just happens to be some uh, air seal grease I got in a package off of Evike like two years ago. Um, it's this, a thicker based silicone oil. Works really well for lubing up cylinders and piston heads. So typically what I'll do is once I get my compression where I want it, I will dollop a little bit on here. And I'll just spread it around with my finger. Because why not? It's easy. And then what I'll do is I will just run it through the cylinder head. Or the cylinder. A little bit. So that it naturally kind of greases up the, the cylinder. Um, cautionary tale here, don't use too much. <laughs> if you use too much, you won't get a seal at all. But it does just help make things live a little bit longer. Keeps your O-rings from drying out. Keeps things from, you know, if there is a lot of friction there and things start scraping, then it's not just going to be shards everywhere. It's going to acclimate itself inside of the grease. Kind of like, like engine oil. Um... So it just helps. This is something I do every time. Um, if it's a fresh build with fresh parts, I'll, I'll lube everything. I'll lube the, the O-rings on the cylinder head, the O-ring on the nozzle a little bit, not a lot. Um, especially the nozzle kind of helps to keep things moving fluidly and for the O-ring not to get ripped to shreds if you're running a, a higher rate of fire build. Um, I haven't really noticed any kind of downside to doing it that way yet. Um... So that's it. But we're going to move on to gears. I'm going to show you guys how I shim gears. Um, it's not going to necessarily be the right or wrong way to shim gears. Uh, it's just the way I do it, and it's the lazy way. But for the most part, it works perfectly fine. Um, 
But before I do that, I'm actually going to remove the cutoff lever, because in this particular build where I'm using a gate titan, I don't need it, and I have to remove it anyhow. It'll make shimming a little bit easier. Um, also, this is my precision screwdriver set. All of my other small screwdrivers I had stripped from, you know, a year or two of use. So I had to go and pick these ones up, which, you know, they work pretty well for what I need them to do. Um, if anyone's out there doing, you know, a tech build, especially on M4 AK, uh, I'm not sure if AK needs them, but I know M4 definitely does. Keep the screw from your cutoff lever, please. Put that somewhere safe so you don't lose it, because um, you'll need it again. I'm going to go ahead and remove the spring that's on here. And the entire selector as a whole, because I have to put a sticker on it. <clears throat> Look at that. She's greased up in there. Huh? That's factory grease right there. Not my doing. Let's clean that off. Yeah, pardon the sound of my voice, by the way, guys. My voice just feels like being low and raspy for today. Usually it doesn't sound like this. Usually it's a little bit more pepper and it sounds like I'm happy to be here. Which today just doesn't sound like it. Which is false advertising. Now I'm not too picky about my gearbox shells. Um, cleaning wise. I'll do a good little scrub here and there and try to wipe off as much as I can of the old nasty stuff that's in there. Uh, but it comes to a point where, you know, I'm not going to be able to get everything. I don't have all the t proper little tools and whatnot I'd need for cleaning this stuff out. But I do want to get this grease out of here, which is being a real pain in the tuchus, if I do say so myself. It's just in that perfect spot where it can't quite get to it properly. I use an Allen key. That'll work pretty well. And it did. It worked splendidly. Um, main reason being so, I just, I'll show you the selector plate here in a minute, and it is just coated in grease, which really wouldn't bother me but since I'm going to be installing some expensive electronics into this gun um, especially where I have to put a sticker on the selector plate I don't want that sticker to somehow be coated taken off interact I don't want it to interact with grease at all is what I'm saying um, that could put the gun function at jeopardy and I'd rather not do that I do not want my gun to go down on a on a game day because I have a little bit of grease on my selector plate touching that sticker, causing it to either come off or not read correctly. Um, that's the reason why I did that. Thinking for the future, as some might say. Now, let's get into gears. Gears, gear sets, bushings, bearings, you know, the whole nine yards. Whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to do with them. Um, now, my preferred brand is usually SHS when it comes to gears, um, but as of late, SHS gears have been kind of hard to get your hands on, and these guys called Rocket have kind of taken over the scene. Very similar, pretty much the same thing. Um, people will say what they will about parts and parts manufacturers, um, but I've bought, you know, five, six, seven, eight gear sets from these guys. And I've only ever had one fail. And it was a failure in, in a really weird way. It wasn't, you know, the tooth broke, the gear shattered, it cracked, whatever. No, none of that. It was um, a failure dead on arrival. And it was a spur gear, this gear right here, the middle drive gear. Um, that for some reason, when I built the gun, you know, I got it shimmed, got everything going. And I was testing the gun. Um, get it together in, in a half shell without a body so I could actually test the sound and the function of the gun, which I do sometimes. Um, I would pull the trigger and the motor would go 
and you'd hear the gears spinning, but nothing would happen. There'd be no cycle. The, the, this, this gear right here, the sector gear, which is the interactor gear with the piston, which wasn't moving at all, which was really odd to me, and I didn't understand why until I took the gun apart, and I was looking at the gears, and this gear right here, which sits right here, um, the top and bottom, so this and this, the two different gear trains right here, were spinning independently of each other, um, which meant that it wasn't driving the next gear in line because there was no resistance being made to actually spin the gear. Um, so that's the only failure I've ever had from these kind of, this brand of gears, which was incredibly odd. Um, took me hours to diagnose that and figure out what was happening because it just didn't make any sense. Um, there's that. Um, if you don't want these, there's probably two other brands you can get. There's Lonex, which are expensive. They're... 60 80 dollar gear sets um i've never had them never bought them don't know anyone who has i haven't asked um because for me i could get you know three of these gear sets for a price of one of those and at that point that's three guns or two extra spares of gear sets that i'm saving money on um other than that there you got siege tech gears which are pretty much the top dog when it comes to gears expensive worth it um i don't have that much money i would love to have a set of siege techs but i don't i use cheap reliable parts because that's how i am i have too many guns to not do that you know you get five or six guns and they're all running siege techs it's you know almost a grand right there gets a little out of hand sometimes but anywho that's gears and, and brands and whatnot um, when it comes to shimming, um, I picked this up off of a, a YouTuber that I watch. Um, he starts with the spur gear, and I really agree with that. It makes things a lot easier. Um, typically the way I shim is I will shim to gearbox, then gear to gear, and that's it. I don't really worry about your, your first drivetrain gear to the motor gear, which is the pinion gear, which is the gear that's attached to the motor. This one right there, clearly see it. Um, I don't really care too much about that. I've never really had a problem because of it. Um, especially in V3s. V3s, it's not that big of an issue because the motor only sits in one spot. You don't really got to worry about it. V2s, it could be a little bit more finicky. Um, because there's no cage on the motor, the motor doesn't always sit the same way, um, because there's a pistol grip and a whole, whole nine yards. Ever so slightly more irritating, those V3s are much easier to work on, um, if you have the right setup, which this particular gun has the right setup. And, um, as for shimming the sector gear, um, I don't really care too much, I'm not running an Aster, so I don't gotta worry about height or depth in the gearbox, um, I usually just shim it to where it's working nicely with the spur gear, and that's pretty much it. Um, I will occasionally check if I have to shim it pretty high. I will check the, the meshing of the, the sector teeth to the piston teeth, because sometimes you can shim it too high or too low, and it, it's just not hitting the, the piston correctly um, how it wants to, especially if you have like a, a half rack piston where the, the piston teeth are half the width that can be a problem um you really got to make sure that you're shimming your your sector gear for that rather than for sound and connection between the other gears um but let's get started with the spur gear um this one is really probably the noisiest gear to be honest it's the easiest one to tell um i'll start out the gate with nothing on it i'm just gonna get my shims ready this is actually a shipping box for a motor works pretty well at holding shims but I slot it in oof that's no good I, I could feel it's difficult to move it's scratchy and noisy noisy as hell um, so I'm probably gonna need a thicker shim as you know shims come in different widths um, zero point 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, all the way up to like 0 
in, in thickness of the shim itself. I prefer to have thinner shims, so 01s, 02s, and, and up to 03s is pretty much my max. Um, I like prefer thinner shims, they give you a lot of more uh, maneuverability in, in how you shim your gears. If I could actually just... I'm struggling here. The struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. Okay, now that 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 immediately is better.